Hi, I'm Jennifer Soames with Head of Hope. We are about to embark on the 2022 holiday season, and here in the U.S., we are just two weeks away from Thanksgiving. So here today are some holiday survival guide tips for those of you affected by traumatic brain injury. These are all things that I have learned firsthand and things that I most definitely will be, will be implementing uh, this holiday season, even nine years post-injury. So know that whether you are brand new to the TBI journey or whether you are a long-term veteran like me, these are tips that uh, might be helpful to, for you or someone that you know. The first is come and be prepared. If you're going to go to a holiday event, what, or maybe you're hosting, uh, make sure that you bring what you need for you. For me, that means having sunglasses handy, always, as well as earplugs. These are two things that I always have with me because light and sound sensitivity are normal post-TBI, whether, again, it's just a couple weeks out or even a couple decades. So bring those things that will help you deal with potential stimulation, like bright lights and loud conversations and things like that. And of course, bring anything else that you need to for you. Medications, supplements, weighted blanket, right? Whatever's gonna help you do you. And families are complex, right? Some may fully be supportive and really have gotten educated on what it's like to live with a TBI and others might not. So you may encounter people that perhaps you haven't seen in a few years who are like, oh yeah, I deal with that too when it comes to things like memory challenges or things that might come out of their mouth like, oh, you're still dealing with that? So when you're thinking about being prepared, not only have the things that you need physically with you, but also kind of have the emotional preparedness as well to perhaps deal with comments like that. It might be helpful to role play with a friend or a trusted uh, family member or a therapist so that you have a response that feels good to you for things that people might say. And if you need to, write down your responses. Have notes, because if you're like me, you don't remember everything off the top of your head. And when it comes to unsolicited advice, because if you haven't already, you'll likely receive some. Just be really sure to hold your boundaries and really be clear that when you're ready and wanting advice or information, you will ask for it. Know that when people try to give unsolicited advice, it really is out of care and concern and, and love for you, but oftentimes it doesn't come out in a way that feels that way. So. Uh, Hold true to what you need. Another tip here is to notify. That means if you're going to someone else's house, notify them either the day of, maybe the day before, of what you need. You might tell them that you're going to need a quiet place to lie down. For me, that's going to be something that I share with the hosts that we're seeing for Thanksgiving. I'm going to need a couch to lie down on, and if it's noisy, I'm going to need to go to another room. So just know that it's your responsibility to let other people know what you need because they can't read your mind. So we have to ask for help and ask for our needs to be met. And uh, one of the most important things, I'm just reading my notes here because I can't remember it all off the top of my head is to have an exit plan. So if you are driving yourself, great. If you're able to do that, that way you can leave whenever you want to. If you're driving with somebody, make sure that you have a conversation with them ahead of time so that they know that if you need to leave early, if you're, if you're done, like if your energy level is exhausted and you, know, you can't take anymore, then you need to leave and they need to be willing to leave when you're ready. It's disappointing always to leave early, but you know what? You gotta do you. You gotta do what's healthy and supportive for you, even though it is disappointing if you have to leave early or even have to step out of a room for a while. Part of that exit plan is also having a room to go to because if you can't leave yourself, 
uh, then by driving yourself, then make sure that you have a place that you can escape to that's quiet, maybe dark, uh, that is kind of devoid of overstimulating things. Um, and if you have any other tips, Please share them in the comments. I would love to know what other tips you have. And I'm wishing you and yours all of the best this holiday season. And if you are ever wanting more tips on how to live your best life, even with a traumatic brain injury and all of its repercussions, get your copy of Head of Hope, a resource and empowerment guide for living and thriving with a traumatic brain injury at headofhope.com. And you can also find it on Amazon. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Happy holidays.